A necklace is an article of jewelry that is worn around the neck. Necklaces may have been one of the earliest types of adornment worn by humans. They often serve ceremonial, religious, magical, or funerary purposes and are also used as symbols of wealth and status, given that they are commonly made of precious metals and stones. Prehistoric Neckwear Prehistoric peoples often used natural materials such as feathers, bone, shells, and plant materials to create necklaces. Evidence of early Upper Paleolithic necklace making in Southern Africa and East Africa dates back to 50,000 BP. By the Bronze Age, metallic jewelry had replaced pre-metallic adornments. Necklaces were first depicted in statuary and art of the ancient Near East. And early necklaces made of precious metals with inset stones were created in Europe. In ancient Mesopotamia, cylinder seals were often strung and worn as jewelry. In ancient Babylon, necklaces were made of carnelian, lapis lazuli, gate, and gold, which was also made into gold chains. Ancient Sumerians created necklaces and beads from gold, silver, lapis lazuli, and carnelian. In ancient Egypt, a number of different necklace types were worn. Upper class ancient Egyptians wore colors of organic or semi-precious and precious materials for religious, celebratory, and funerary purposes. In ancient Greece, delicately made gold necklaces created with repouse and plated gold wires were worn. Most often these necklaces were ornamented with blue or green enameled rosettes, animal shapes, or vase-shaped pendants that were often detailed with fringes. It was also common to wear long gold chains with suspended cameos and small containers of perfume. New elements were introduced in the Hellenistic period. Colored stones allowed for polychromatic pieces, and animal head finials and spear-like or bud-shaped pendants were hung from chains. Ancient Etruscans used granulation to create granulated gold beads which were strung with glass and fans beads to create colorful necklaces. In ancient Rome, necklaces were among the many types of jewelry worn by the Roman elite. Gold and silver necklaces were often ornamented with foreign and semi-precious objects such as amber. In addition, ropes of pearls, gold plates inset with enamel, and lustrous stones set in gold filigree were often worn. Many large necklaces and the materials that adorn the necklaces were imported from the Near East. Later in the empire, Following barbarian invasions, colorful and gaudy jewelry became popular. In the Byzantine era, ropes of pearls and embossed gold chains were most often worn, but new techniques such as the use of yellow allowed for necklaces with brighter, more predominant gemstones. The early Byzantine era also saw a shift to distinctly Christian jewelry which displayed the new Christian iconography. Bronze amulets embossed with coral were common. In Celtic and Gallic Europe, the most popular necklace was the heavy metal torque made most often out of bronze, but sometimes out of silver, gold, or glass or amber beads. Early European barbarian groups favored wide, intricate gold collars not unlike the Torque. Germanic tribes often wore gold and silver pieces with complex detailing and inlaid with colored glass and semi-precious stones, especially garnet. Anglo-Saxon and Scandinavian groups worked mainly in silver, due to a deficit of gold and wrought patterns and animal forms into neck rings. In Qing Dynasty China, a cord necklace called Kaozhu, Chinese Kaozhu, was worn by the Qing Dynasty emperors and other members of the The cord necklace originated from a Buddhist rosary sent in 1643 by the Dalai Lama to the first emperor of the Qing Dynasty. The necklace is composed of 108 small beads, with four large beads of contrasting stones to symbolize the four seasons, and was placed between groups of 27 beads. The necklace was also practical as it could be used for mathematical calculations in the absence of an abacus. In China, there is a custom of wearing a necklace with a longevity lock pendant. These lock charms were sometimes personally tied around the necks of children by Buddhist or Taoist priests. The longevity lock is known as Shangming Suo, lit. Longevity lock has an important form of amulet for children for thousands of years in Chinese culture. According to Chinese beliefs, the Changming Seal protect children from evil spirits and bad luck by locking its wearer's soul and life inside of the lock. The Changming Seal is often made with precious materials, such as gold, silver, and jade, and having auspicious words carved on it. This form of necklace continues to be worn in present day China. Ying Liuo was a ring-like neck ornament or fashionable necklace which was originally a Buddhist ornament depicted in Buddhist arts, e.g. sculptures and paintings in China. The Ying Liu have roots in ancient India where its earlier prototype is the Indian ornament Kira. The depictions of the Kira was introduced in China along with Buddhism. The depictions of Ying Liu in China 
such as those found in Dunyuang, evolved in shape and style showing the cultural integration of foreign, non-Chinese culture, and the native Chinese culture due to the special characteristics of its geography. The Yingluo eventually evolved from an ornament in Buddhist arts and eventually became an actual necklace by the Tang Dynasty. Shell Necklaces Aboriginal Tasmanian women have been making shell necklaces for mariner. Fascinatrocus irisata shells for at least 2,600 years. With some major collections in museums, the continuation of the practice is being threatened by reducing supply, and sixth-generation Palawa woman Lola Grino is concerned that the practice will die out. We are going to end this video right away. If you have any query or information to share, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.